Welcome to my talk from Jamstack to Incremental Static Generation, a case study on learn.robinhood.com. Learn at Robinhood is a website that holds a large amount of static content. It holds articles and terms definitions for all kinds of things related to stocks, investing, and I think anything related to Robinhood. The current website is built as Jamstack. That means all the HTML is generated at build time and then all served through the CDN, in our case, on S3. We use Contentful as a content management system and it has multiple daily updates. Our daily deploy, uh, we have a daily deploy, which means once a day at a specific time, we build the entire project and refresh all the content. Basically, our deployment looks like this. There's something akin to a cron job that once a day triggers the entire project build. As we build the project, we fetch the content, we render it, and then once we have all the files, we upload them to S3. We also have an option to do a manual trigger in case we want immediate changes. In numbers, our deployment takes about 15 minutes. Uh, but the code staleness can be up to 24 hours. If you push code right after the deployment, you have to wait until the next day to see any changes. And the same happens with content. Modifying an article, creating or deleting it would not show up up to, uh, up to the next day. This, uh, and this also means that whenever we have critical changes on content or code, we have to manually trigger deploy. Uh, we do have new requirements and new goals with, for this project. One of them is supporting personalized content. This means that our Jamstack strategy is not going to work for, a, for many potential features. So we are moving to SSR. We also would like to achieve real-time content management. It is unacceptable for our, our copywriters that they have to wait um, until one, up to one day to see new content on the website. And we want to keep the performance of our Jamstack website. It's really fast and served globally. And also we want to have a good or even better developer experience. And how does Next.js incremental static generation work? Basically, um, once, when it, once it's set up, a user comes to, our, to your website and makes a request. The Next.js app will serve the current version uh, of the HTML it has. But it's also going to check if the content is stale or not. And if it is stale, it's going to trigger a process by creating a new render of that endpoint or that path. So the next time there's a request hitting this path, it's going to have a new version. The implementation with Next.js is pretty straightforward. Uh, you have to define against static props. In this function, you fetch or manage all the content you need to have. You pass it as props, and then you also have to pass an option called revalidate. This is what's going to tell Next.js if the content should be considered stale or not. Internally, this uses an HTTP header both on Next.js and what the CDN is going to use. For dynamic paths, the, the process is basically the same. You can generate a page precisely on the information you need and also put a special revalidate option. Like you have to put the revalidate option, but you can change the time based on your site. You do also want to uh, define get static paths. And this is because at build time, you do want to pre-render as much as you want. If you don't pre-render anything at build time, then all the first requests to the website are going to either hit a 404 or have some kind of performance issue. Uh, what does, uh, we do have a new option here, which is called fallback. And fallback decides the strategy of what to do if a request comes in and there's no pre-render of that page. Um, by default, it will return a 404 and if you hit the page again, after the pre-render process, it will just render the page. In our case, because we do have SSR and we plan to use it, we can actually 
generate the page dynamically for the first time. In both cases, uh, after the first request and after the building time of the new page is done, the following requests are going to hit the pre-render. So we, as we move to SSR, we have some different changes, some changes in our deployment. First of all, we can deploy on each code push. Uh, every time a developer commits, we build a project, we build the content with the latest rendering rules, and we deploy the server. And the server deployment has our next JS app. It does have load balancers and uh, things like that, but basically uh, we do have a CDN in front of it. Um, and this is important to serve the pre-rendered pages as cache. So what, what does this change in our, in our workflow? Deployment takes about the same time, might be even a bit slower because we have to go through a few more hoops for SSR, but roughly the same. But the most important part is that the code is stale as much as we take to deploy because we have continuous deploy. And even more important, uh, our content staleness is up to our revalidation time, with, which is in the order of minutes in our case. So let's review a bit of the goals we had. We wanted to support personal, personalized content features. We can now. We have SSR, which means we have control of when to do dynamic rendering or when to do static rendering. Real-time content management. Well, it's not truly real time, but it's as fast as our revalidation strategy, we can, which can be as short as one second. What about high performance? The vast majority of our requests are going to be served by the CDN. So we keep the benefits of Jamstack. And in our developer experience, it's way better. There's no manual triggers to uh, to respond to content changes or code changes and we don't have to depend on arbitrary deploy times what are the key takeaways why does this work the key takeaway is that the content and the code deployment are decoupled code can be deployed every time code changes and content automatically changes at runtime so there's no dependency between these two processes and um, ISG is something between SSR and Jamstack. It gives you the benefits of Jamstack um, to an SSR deployment, but also through serverless and so through some other uh, techniques, you can use some of the ISG options on Jamstack. So it bridges the gap between these two implementations. And the naive, at least the naive implementation of doing ISG is extremely trivial. Thank you for listening to my talk. Uh, you can uh, contact me at Discord, uh, email, or Twitter. Thank you very much.